here with Mark Brown, Dye Hair Kodiak. And uh, Mark, you know, every time you come to town, you bring something cool. Last time we did this, you were in a Kodiak 100, and today it's a 900. Uh, not a replacement for the uh, 100 airplane. FAA certified, Part 23 standards. A lot more refinement and a lot more speed. This airplane was just debuted at Oshkosh 2022. Uh, and we'd like to show you a few of the features of it today. So this airplane, I'll preface this with, this is not a replacement for the Kodiak 100. The Kodiak 100 is still going to be made. In fact, we've, we're sold out just as far on the Kodiak 100 as we are in the 900. That airplane will be our ultimate bush airplane. That was designed to go anywhere on gravel bars in Alaska and Papua New Guinea. This airplane is a step up from that. This is a little bit of Kodiak 100 and a little bit of TBM 960. Of course, Dyer owns the Kodiak brand now. They were instrumental in taking a lot of the luxury and speed and all the things that they've learned with the TBM and bringing it down into the Kodiak market. So I'm gonna hit on a few of those features today and why this airplane is different from a 100 and what makes it special. So the Kodiak 900, has a PT6-140A, it's 900 shaft horsepower uh, for continuous, so 900 horsepower on takeoff, 900 horsepower in cruise, and it's connected to this five-blade Hartzell composite propeller. This was really instrumental to, to put on this airplane for noise. Of course, we sell these airplanes all over the world and there's a lot of really strict noise uh, requirements in certain countries, and the Kodiak fits within the most stringent noise requirements anywhere in the world partly due to this five-blade Hartzell propeller. The real interesting and real amazing thing with the Kodiak 900 is the fact that we were able to get a 210-knot true airspeed cruise out of this airplane. And that was accomplished through a variety of ways. So this airplane is truly quite a bit different than a Kodiak 100. The engine, dash 140, 900 horsepower has a large part to play with the speed. The other, the other things that we did is exactly what you're looking at here. The various inlet ducts, how air intakes the engine and outflows is a really important aspect to drag reduction. So our engineers spent countless hours and years and various iterations on how to get the airflow into the engine, do what it needs to do through the oil coolers, through the, the engine itself, and then how to exit the air without causing turbulent airflow. There was a whole, a whole host of things that we did, but basically on the Kodiak 900, the entire firewall forward is an all brand new. New cowlings, new engine, pretty much everything is brand new. So in, in here we see the Dash 140. We have a lot of really interesting features and we were able to incorporate a lot of new manufacturing techniques into the Kodiak 900. We were able to do additive manufacturing in a lot of ways, so you see some 3D printed parts. You also see that there's no batteries. On the Kodiak 100, there's two batteries in, in the engine compartment. We moved uh, the battery actually in behind the firewall to help with some uh, international certification efforts. And the nice thing with the battery now is it's a quick disconnect battery. So for our fleet customers that are operating maybe in the Arctic regions where they don't have the ability to put the airplane in uh, overnight, the battery can easily be taken out, stored in the hangar with you, uh, and that way it doesn't uh, degrade in the cold temperatures. The other thing that we completely changed was the way the TKS system is filled and drained. So you can see the TKS, uh, we supply a hose that connects to that, um, to that port. And you just flip the switch on, you load the TKS fluid in, just kind of like uh, the gas at your gas pump. When the, end, when the TKS tank is full, it shuts off automatically. You disconnect the hose and it's all done. The maintainers really like it as well because there's also a drain function that allows you to easily drain it. So when the TKS is, uh, needs to be serviced, you can easily drain it. The Kodiak 900 has an, what we call an integral cargo pod. So every airplane comes with a cargo pod. It's not an option, you have to get it. And what that allowed us to do is it totally allowed us to rethink how a cargo pod is supposed to be part of a plane. And it also allowed us to make some changes internal to the airplane. 
So a few areas that we've made some drastic changes is between bays two and three. So you can see that there is a, a pass-through between bays two and three. There is also a fourth rear hatch. So we have the standard three cargo pod doors, but we've also added a fourth hatch. That allows you to put in very long, straight items that otherwise couldn't fit cattywonked through a side door and you can put in things like surfboards, fishing poles, lumber, anything you can think of really. Um, and of course, you, that door, you can put things on it, you can add weight to it, so it doesn't detract from the amount of weight you can carry in that rear bay. So that's an added feature. Another few things that we've done is we were able to fare the cargo pod in, like I said, as part of the plane. So most cargo pods, even though the Kodiak 100, the cargo pod only slows the airplane down by a knot or two, um, this, this cargo pod is part of the plane. So we get the 210 knots with the cargo pod as you see it here. So we've always been known at 65 pounds a square foot in our cargo pod, so you can put really heavy dense items in there, which a lot of you know various special missions operators with cameras and stuff, they really like that feature of the pod. So probably the most noticeable difference between the Kodiak 100 and Kodiak 900 is these wheel fairings, or sometimes we call them wheel pants. So these are a large component of where the speed comes from in this airplane. Uh, they're on all three wheels, and you do have a door here so you can easily check tire pressures and uh, tire wear. But the, the wheel pants and wheel fairings are very, very robust. So you can see here, I can actually stand on them. No problem at all. There's no placards to say you can't stand on them. I use them to get up and check my fuel sometimes on the single point. So we've tested them all over Idaho in some of our flight testing regimes. They hold up, this airplane can land off airport or on unimproved strips, grass, gravel, etc. And the, the wheel fairings hold up just fine. The airplane is, uh, the Kodiak 900 does have slightly smaller tires than the Kodiak 100. They're also a little bit higher pressure. So one of the biggest differences between the Kodiak 100 and the Kodiak 900 is where you can land the airplanes. As I mentioned earlier, the Kodiak 100 was designed to go in the craziest, roughest places as the modern day Bush airplane. You see these airplanes landing on thousand foot strips in Papua New Guinea on the side of a mountain. The Kodiak 900 isn't going to do that kind of stuff. You can certainly still land it on grass, gravel, all sorts of, you know, non-traditional surfaces but you're not gonna be taking this airplane into gravel bars in Alaska or real off airport type situations. But we've certainly taken it into places like Johnson Creek in Idaho, which is pretty popular in a lot of the various Idaho strips, and it does just fine. The Kodiak 900 and 100 share the same wing and share the same empennage. So basically the tail cone back, tail feathers are all the same between both products. There's some few minor tweaks you can see the, the flaps have flap fairings over it, so for drag reduction. But overall, the wing is the same, which the Kodiak 100 has always been known for our stall resistant wing design. This airplane has that same wing, and what that allows you to do is fly really slow. So the Kodiak 900 can fly nearly as slow as a 100, but it also has that same stall resistant characteristics. And then every Kodiak 900 comes with single point refueling. So it sits a little bit higher than a Kodiak 100. So we've made the fueling easier for, for our customers. Every Kodiak has the single point refueling. What makes this one particularly nice is it is a high pressure system and it only adds a few pounds to the overall airplane. Uh, so you can fill, I think, something like 70 gallons per minute. So you can theoretically fill the tanks from empty to full in about three minutes. As I've mentioned, we've added a lot to the Kodiak 900, but we have not lost functionality. So these doors actually still pop out. There's a ball and socket right here. So you just pop this out and pop the one out on the other side and the door folds flat. So that gets the door out of the way and you can easily add, you know, put in stretchers or bring a forklift right up to the airplane to load stuff if you're using the airplane for more of a utilitarian purpose. So one big change that we made in the Kodiak 900 is we took a look at the interior. Obviously there's three and a half more feet of room in this airplane, so we had a lot more space to work with. And we were able to just look at the interior and kind of figure out what our customers liked and what they uh, didn't like and what we could improve. 
There's quite a bit of interesting features about the seats. So as you can see, they have dual armrests. They have um, car style seat belts. So from a comfort standpoint, they're much more comfortable. They recline. Uh, the seats come in and out really easily. So there's just two quarter turn fasteners. So you need no tools to get the seats in and out or to move them around. And probably the biggest feature change of these seats is these seats can go forwards or backwards. So no longer are you, um, no longer do the seats have to stay one direction. These are multi-directional. So you can do a double club like we have it set up today. You can do all forward facing seats. You can do, you know, rear facing if you wanted to, and you can move them anywhere in the cabin. So that's a really nice feature. So some, some flights you might want a double club, some flights you might want only two or three seats in the back and dirt bikes and other stuff. Uh, or if you move them all forward facing, you can have quite a bit of rear storage. So like I mentioned, we have three and a half extra feet. The other things that we've changed is every seat has an amenity panel. So every seat has two USB chargers, a USB-C and a regular USB. You also have Limo jacks for headsets, so every headset can be plane powered, so no batteries. And then every seat has a cup holder. The other thing is the window size and placement. So the people, um, our customers really loved, we actually had some customers that bought this airplane just simply, bought the Kodiak 100 simply because they really loved the ability to look outside. As you see, I'm sitting here normally, the window is right at my eye level, I don't have to bend down. I don't have to hunch over to look out the window. So we're out at a chalk here and the uh, 900 up and running. What do we need to know for taxi in this big airplane? <laughs> so the Kodiak 900 is very similar in how it taxis and handles to the Kodiak 100. So it's a turboprop, so I have beta and reverse. So I can help slow myself down without the need for brakes. This also has a, a steerable nose wheel and it also has a free castering nose wheel. So it's steerable to about 17 degrees either side of center and then it free casters so you can still pivot so you can still make very very sharp U-turn. So one of the other big things I forgot to mention in, in one of the redesigns now that we're in the airplane and it's running is the environmental system changed quite significantly in this airplane. So the AC, we were known for having one of the best ACs in the game and the Kodiak 100, so that stayed relatively the same. The Kodiak uh, 900, though, we completely changed the heating system. So it's bleed air heat through the entire cabin. So we have bleed air heat um, up front with the pilots like we do on the Kodiak 100, but now we also have bleed air heat all the way to the very rear of the cabin. With this bigger engine, it allowed us to do a little bit have a little bit more bleed air heat so even on the coldest days this cabin stays extremely warm which is really nice you still have to set the power so i'll go to the engine page we got big power gauges right here torque itt are the main ones i'm looking at and then once we're here we'll just bring the power up we got plenty of runway no need to do a static takeoff today and here comes that 900 horsepower top of the green. There's 60 knots. We'll start to rotate. Climb out at about 85. We're here at Hartford Brainerd. We got plenty of runway, uh, a little bit over 4,000 feet, but uh, on a short runway, what's uh, what can it do? Uh, on takeoff, we can expect something close to, uh, you know, 1,000 feet, 1,100 feet, you know, on more of an unimproved style strip. So it still gets off the ground really quick. Just a few other things I don't know if you noticed, but we actually have a horsepower readout as well. So you can see as you climb, your horsepower will obviously drop off a little bit. So we're still producing, even in the climb, 880 horsepower here. Should be doing about 2,000 feet a minute, give or take. So the climb rate is pretty significant. Kodiak zero, zero, Zulu, change approved. So we have about the same power to weight ratio as a PC-12. So the in this airplane it's about 8.5 to 1. Now one of the things that 
Could make this airplane a good step up turboprop. Maybe somebody coming out of a Cirrus or even maybe a 182, 206 with G1000 is the significant amount of envelope protection in the G1000 NXI DFC 700. Right. Um, full envelope protection? Correct, yeah. So we carried all that stuff over. We were one of the very first turboprops. In fact, as far as I know, we were the first turboprop with the full ESP level mode, everything, and the Kodiak 100. We carried that all over to the Kodiak 900. So we have, 271. we have level switch, we have the full ESP protection, we have uh, overspeed, underspeed protection. So just for reference, we're climbing at 125 knots. We're ISA plus six today. We're getting about 1,800 and 1,900 feet per minute in the climb. And our true airspeed in the climb is 140 knots. And what do you need to know once you come through the climb with it? It's This airplane is about as simple as it gets. Um, you, The only thing you have to really be aware of is on you know, on takeoff, it's a non-FADEC engine. So we set the power. So as you saw on takeoff, we brought the big gauges up. We looked at torque and ITT, and we brought it to the top of the green. The prop doesn't move in this airplane, so the prop stays full forward the entire flight. It's got that real quiet five-blade propeller. And then really all I'm doing is I'm just monitoring the, IT, the torque and ITT in the climb. I'm just keeping it at the top of the green. And so every Kodiak 900 comes with 10-place oxygen. But most flights that I do, I'm doing between you know 8,000 to 12,000 feet, so I don't have to be on oxygen. But if I do a longer flight or maybe I want to get tailwinds up high, I'll throw the oxygen cannula on. And uh, this airplane really shines up there too. It, you know, this airplane will basically get, um, you know, 210, maybe a little bit over it, some of those higher altitudes. We code everything at 12,000 feet because that's realistically where a lot of our pilots will be flying. Yeah, fuel capacity of this airplane is basically identical. Same wing as the Kodiak 100, so it's 320 gallons fuel capacity. Um, it, uh, this airplane's a little bit more efficient, so the PT6-140A is a more efficient variant of the PT6-140. So this creates about uh, 35 more horsepower than the 140 at the same fuel consumption. We also, being that it's a lot more aerodynamic, your per seat mile in this airplane is almost unmatched based on fuel burn. So efficiency-wise, it is a really great way to move a lot of people you know, um, those middle distances, two to 500 nautical miles. Um, and compared to the Kodiak 100, we still have about the same range. So the Kodiak 100 has a little bit lower fuel consumption, uh, but it's a little bit slower. And in this case, it, it kind of all equals out because we're going a little bit faster, but burn a little bit more fuel. So Mark, uh, what do you think it might take a typical, uh, fairly experienced, step-up pilot to move into this airplane. Maybe somebody coming from a uh, Piston SL-22. Uh, what kind of transition might they expect? Yeah, I mean, like we've talked about today, the Kodiak is probably the easiest turbine to get into in terms of the fact that it flies, you know, on final approach speed, I'm doing 65, 70 knots. You can slow it down to piston engine speeds, uh, and it's a lot less complex in a lot of ways than a piston engine. There's no run up, there's no bags, there's, you know, the prop stays full forward the whole time. So there really isn't much to have to worry about uh, to get into a Kodiak. Obviously it can carry a little bit more weight. You certainly have to be aware of the extra power, 900 horsepower, but we have a lot of customers that have moved from pistons into the Kodiak 100. We're st seeing that the same, you know, a lot of customers that are moving from pistons into a 900. So what's typical delivered price? So the 2023 pricing for a Kodiak 900 well-equipped is about 3.5 to 3.6 million. And you could read a full report on the new Kodiak 900 in the December 2022 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. Thanks a lot again to Mark Brown for bringing us another cool airplane. Happy to be here. Thanks, Larry.